Have you ever heard the phrase, loose lips sink ships? Well, today we're gonna look into if you're sinking any ships by poor OPSEC. So we're gonna talk about what OPSEC is, how to use it, and how to make sure that we are using OPSEC to improve our organization. Hi everybody, welcome to Studio Sec. Thank you for watching. Like if this video is helpful, comment down below with your thoughts on OPSEC. Subscribe for more content we're posting every week and subscribe to my Twitter account where we can engage if you have any uh, if you have any video ideas that you'd like to see on this channel, any questions you might have about cybersecurity, hit me up on Twitter. I'd be more than happy to put something together. Information is our number one priority, and it can be leaked in more ways than just any kind of cyber activity. What's even worse is imagine accidentally leaking information without ever even realizing it. And in fact, yes, you can do that if you're not following good, proper OPSEC. Now, first, we need to understand what exactly OPSEC is. Well, OPSEC is an acronym Kind of condensing down the term operational security. Basically what that means is it's the practice of securing information over the course of an operation or a procedure. So if you think about going on throughout your day at work, you're employing good OPSEC by not telling someone in another company literally what you're doing. You know, and you're, and you're not broadcasting on social media what kind of platforms you're using. So these are ways that you can employ OPSEC and we're actually gonna talk about that here in just a moment. First, we need to understand why OPSEC is important. We live in a world of good guys and bad guys. Cybersecurity is based on this premise. Well, OPSEC is needed to make sure that the bad guys don't get the information that we have uh, and make our lives more difficult. Basically, we need to make sure the bad guys are not able to learn about our tools, techniques, procedures, size, strength, capabilities, any of these things that they can use to gain access to any of our systems, to basically understand what current projects we might be running, anything like that. Simply put, OPSEC is incredibly important. I mean, you can't really secure information if you're implementing bad OPSEC. You are only as strong as your weakest link. So if you have an incredibly strong cyber posture, but you have really poor OPSEC, it really doesn't matter. Now, how can we do OPSEC? How can we practice OPSEC in our day-to-day -day lives at work or at home? Well, first we wanna make sure that we're taking the perspective of our enemy or our adversary, you know, insert here, someone that you do not want to be able to access this information. The first question we wanna ask is, what information do we care about if we are the enemy? So for instance, uh, you know, clearly we would wanna know about current projects, we'd wanna know about you know, different kinds of applications or platforms that you might be running in your environment. We might wanna think about what kind of tools, techniques, and procedures that your organization uses throughout the day. We might wanna know about you know, how many people work in your IT department. Uh, who those people might be, what their interests could be. A lot of that might be able to be co collected through open source intelligence, such as social media, LinkedIn, you know, whatever. And then you can ascertain capabilities by finding out what kind of platforms and applications you're running. You know, maybe you're using a really high grade firewall. Well, that's a capability that, you know, an attacker might wanna be aware of. Now, second, we wanna think of how, as the enemy, you would gain the answers to those questions. So. Would you, you know, be able to gather that information through open source intelligence? You know, do you have to go on social media for that? Uh, could you find information on social media? Could you Google it? Any sort of open source intelligence feeds that you're able to use to gain intelligence on yourself, you know, that's something you need to know and probably mitigate. Now, if you could also gain this intelligence by maybe, you know, communicating with a coworker or maybe somebody that works for your organization that maybe if you're able to get them in a position where they might be willing to share that information, well, that's something you're gonna wanna know about. Now, third, you're gonna wanna know how your organization is protected and how your organization is not protected from these methods that you've already concocted from your second question where you're trying to find, you know, how you can gather that intelligence. So, you know, you wanna, you wanna look at your strengths, your weaknesses, how you are able to prevent your adversary from collecting that intelligence and then how you are weak and not able to prevent your adversary from collecting that intelligence. And that will help you to determine, you know, where you should shift your priorities and resources to make sure that you are holistically strong. Now, it's up to you to look at how you can implement these security strategies. And we're gonna talk about a couple general uh, ways to implement operational security, but you do generally wanna make sure that people at the outside of your organization are not able to gather information about, you know, your tools, techniques, procedures, your size, strength, and capabilities, those kinds of things. 
And it might also help that people inside your organization aren't able to gather that about other divisions. If you're a large organization, you know, if you have the ability to, co to compartmentalize, and so, you know, people at one end of your organization don't really know about, you know, tools, techniques, or procedures, or size, strength, capabilities of another end of the business that maybe they don't interact too much. So in this case, we'll say, you know, your active directory team, and then like your HR team, you know, those, you know, they don't really need to work with each other that much unless, you know, say you're adding someone to your organization. So you need to create an AD profile for them um, or remove or whatever. But, you know, aside from, you know, the necessary flows of communication and information, you know, they don't, you know, one team doesn't necessarily need to know that much about the other. So here are some general ways to improve the OPSEC in your organization. You want to limit social media exposure. So maybe it's some kind of policy that you have your employees sign that kind of basically states that they have a non-disclosure agreement. They can't go posting on social media uh, or anywhere else about different kinds of tools, techniques, procedures, size, strength, capabilities, applications, projects, anything like that on social media. And that will insulate you from a lot. You know, people will post a lot on social media. Maybe they're posting that they're frustrated on work. And that will be kind of difficult to get ahead unless, you know, you have a really healthy work environment. But someone posting on social media that they're frustrated at work, that could clearly tip the enemy off that, oh, well, this person's disgruntled. Maybe we can get them to spill some beans on this company. Well, that's something that you, you need to be careful of. Uh, and so that's someone that maybe Either you can try to get them back into your company and, and, and mend those broken relationships so then they won't be willing to break OPSEC. But if you know things are not looking so good, you'll need to come up with a way to mitigate information loss. The next is to have a clean desk policy. And this basically means that anytime you get up from your desk and you leave, there needs to be nothing on your desk. All your papers, your computer, everything needs to be put away, you know, in a locked container. So say, you know, you get up for a meeting, you take what you need for the meeting, you lock your computer, you put your loose items into a locked drawer, and that way anybody that's passing by in the office is not able to look on the desk and start collecting information. That's a really good way, you know, to make sure that passersby, people that might be inside your organization or even outside on a visit, aren't able to just stop by, start collecting intelligence just by looking around the office. And the third, of course, is just being willing to take your time and implement solid security. Security takes time and it does take patience. You may not be able to move at breakneck development speeds if you're implementing solid security and you're taking time to make sure that security is a priority in your development process. And while that might be frustrating on you know the development end or just trying to you know make really tight windows in the timetable, it's really going to pay off because it's it's ultimately it's the difference of it could be you know a few days or a few weeks that maybe you're behind to su suffering a security breach that could cause I mean a significant amount of damage for your company not only financially but reputationally. So taking your time, being careful, not cutting any corners when it comes to security, that is a great way to improve operational security. Mainly just remember that OPSEC is not a government term. It's a term all of us should be familiar with. So take your time, do your due diligence, make sure you're implementing solid security and you'll be upholding solid OPSEC. Thank you.